Okay, let's talk about the Jesus model. When I was doing my research and just thinking about how do I create a system for discipleship, I looked at the research, I looked out, see what books were out there, what other people were doing. And I didn't find a lot of books on a systematic proce process. I found a lot of books about the concept of discipleship and giving you kind of the basics of what that looked like and here's what you can do to start it. But it left most of the creative aspect of it in the laps of the person who's doing the reading. You're challenged to do it. You're, you're totally convinced to do it by virtue of the scriptures and, and what you saw Jesus do. And there are great books out there, but mostly they are not taking you by the hand and really discipling you through the process of you going through discipleship. So the Lord gave me the tracks in which I applied to my own life and the tracks being, first of all, if I'm going to take you by the hand and pastor you or disciple you, I would want you to sit in my congregation and listen to my message, of course. So I decided to make the first part a uh, message, a writing to you. Then I'd take you through a supplemental book that was a benchmark book for me. And then I would take you through the, the a, uh, Proverbs, and then the Psalm, and then the Gospels, and then give you some doctrine, and then a devotional. So that was my process. So that kind of developed into the tracks that you will find from week to week. Now, let's go to the Jesus model uh, dynamic. The reason why people don't disciple others, and though we're called to be disciplers, is that they just don't know how. They need someone to take them by the hand and walk them through it. That's the best way. That's what discipleship really is. It's more than just a mentoring. You're actually coming alongside a person and showing them the way so that they then learn that way and then pass that way onto the others. That's why they were referred to in the book of Acts as people of the way. The way being, oh, you're a Christian because you live the way Jesus lived. So that's the Jesus model. But Jesus had to take three years of training the 12 that he discipled. So what he did was he prayed. He had a select group of people all around him that, was, that began to follow him and he began calling some of them out. But then he prayed to the Father, say, who do you want me to focus intentionally on? And it boiled down to the 12, which he um, hand selected because the Father showed him who he was to select. So then he invited them to be with him, not just come here and preach every now and then or on you know every Sunday. He invited them to be in his life every day for three years. And in that process, because they were around him, he got to challenge them. He got to challenge their worldview, the way they thought. He got to correct their thinking, which when you read the Gospels, you'll know what those times are. Don't have time to go into that. But the point is three years of discipling. If we're gonna be really strong, solid Christians, it takes a good foundation of three years for that to really happen. And when there's a systematic approach to create that, then you find that it being more intentional, it really does work. What, any, uh, what um, let's say, profession, that really requires a specialization. Would you ever go in without three years of training and internship and, and then getting under a mentor and so on without taking that kind of time and being disciplined in that process? So if you want success in any kind of career field, having a foundation of three years is really solid. So if we wanna be really strong, solid Christians, then we need to have someone take us through three years of discipling and what are the best things, what are the best tools that we need to learn? And so that's what I take you through by my own experience. Now Jesus had public and private uh, meetings when he was ministering for three and a half years. So the disciples got to see him speaking in public, but most of the time he took them aside and he just taught them individually. And he'd sometimes focus more uniquely on Peter, James, and John. 
So he had that inner circle of those three guys and poured a little bit more into them and brought them into his world of ministry at times uh, than the others. But there was something going on here. There was, it was a system that Jesus had applied that was both proficient and creative. It was both effective and spontaneous. And this is what this series does for you. It isn't just head knowledge. It isn't just pumping into you a lot of knowledge about the Bible and so on. It's teaching you how to be proficient in your study, giving you tools to know how to study, and then the spontaneity to apply that in the group setting by sharing your insights. Now, the fastest person growing in the church should be the pastor because, as I said in the previous um, um, episode, that you will see the pastor always being ahead because he's studying, he's, he's digesting, he's researching, and then he's sharing what you want, uh, what he wants to uh, give you out of that. What that does for him is that he's gonna remember three or four weeks down the road what he preached three or four weeks back. Whereas we, when we're just hearing the message and maybe taking notes, if you, if you take notes at all, you may uh, get maybe one or two things out of that you remember. But let me ask you four weeks later, what did pastor so-and-so preach four weeks ago? Give me one poignant point that he pointed out to you or that he showed you. and. I would say probably nine times out of 10, that's not gonna be remembered. And maybe one person with a good memory will remember. But what if you're the one doing the speaking after you're the one that did the research, guess what? You will remember that so much better. And research really shows that. This is how you retain better. And so that group dynamic that is taking place with your Peter, James, and John is that they will uh, hear this because they're doing the research. I'm giving you all lessons. They're doing the research. And then you come back and you share your insights with all of the others. And the result is you retain it better. So this is part of the process. There is proficiency, but the creative side is based on what you're receiving from each of those brothers. And then you can, you know, back and forth, share uh, other things that the Holy Spirit will show in that group setting. And when you start taking on your own disciples and find your Peter, James, and John, they will be different than the group that you are in, that you were invited into. They will be different individuals and that creativity that you're going to experience with them will be Holy Spirit downloaded. And you'll come with knowledge that they don't have from your previous experience of discipling. And in the creative mode, the Holy Spirit's going to tailor fit your experience with them in speaking what you're going to share with them. And again, they also to you. And what you have is, again, more input and more receiving. You're going over the material again. And so this just gets more uh, solidly placed in your spirit. So that when you're out there, your confidence level is up, you're talking to people that don't know the Lord, or you're talking to someone else that doesn't know the Bible very well, and the Holy Spirit's gonna bring all this back to you. And that's the beauty of this system and the Jesus model that he showed us. So when I'm asking God, what does this look like? What does this three-year program look like that I'm supposed to write and prepare and present? He said, how did Jesus do it? And how did you disciple yourself?